All right. You're on camera, so only talk good about people. You can talk bad about me if you want. Okay, so we're going to take an hour or so this morning and go through kind of how professional development and compensation works. Uh, we've talked about this in bits and pieces, um, and most of it is written down. Uh, but I've realized a couple things just in some conversations the last couple months. One is people don't read what I write most of the time. And two is even if people do read what I write, there's still a lot of confusion. <laughs> so we, we don't want any confusion. Uh, we want you guys to understand how this works. And... Um, to be fair, uh, we're still figuring some of this out. So, and we'll talk today about some stuff that's done and some stuff that's not done. And, um, you know, you guys, there may be, it may be that, that some of you guys have an opportunity to help us figure some of this out. And, uh, so it, this is very much a work in progress. And, um, some of this... You know, we may change moving forward, but um, we're never going to change it without talking to you guys, and it'll never be changed with the intent of cheating any team member out of money they've earned. Does that make sense? Okay. So you, you guys know we're the three principals are good folks here. We're not we're not going to do that to you. But as we as we move through this program, we may realize that there's just things that would make it work better as a group. You know, I include the employees in that. We may have some conversations and say, hey, this part's really clunky or this part I don't think is fair. And so we'll talk about that a little bit. Okay. So the other thing is that I, I think people don't understand is all this works together. I mean, this, uh, this stuff is like baked into the DNA of the company, right? So there's a lot of things that we do here that, that all tie into this, right? So it's the monthly look aheads and it's the, um, professional development program and all that stuff is kind of, it all works together. So, and I don't know that I've ever taken the time to really explain how all this stuff works together. So we're going to do that. Um, this is, this is really important to me. I, I don't know how many man hours I put into this a lot. Like I've, I've this is, a lot of work has gone into this, and a lot more work is going to go into it. Uh, but it's really important, and so that's why we're that's why we're putting the work into it. So um, it's not something that that I take lightly. Um, it's something that I basically guys wanted to set up the the kind of system that addressed all of the problems I had getting paid fairly when I was coming, you know, when I was going through the ranks, right? Um, when I left my first job out of college to go to my second surveying job, I got a $25 an hour raise when I switched jobs or 23. I don't know. It was big. Okay. So what does that, what does that indicate about the place I had worked for 12 years? Pain. Yeah, that was a problem, right? If, if you're leaving a job for a $23 an hour raise, there, there's a problem there, right? Okay, so my bad experiences there motivated a lot of this program, right? And, um, and I don't mind telling you guys how things work there. Uh, basically, everything was completely opaque. And if you made the wrong principal mad, you were basically screwed for life. And that's what happened. I, the, I made the wrong principal upset, and I basically hosed my career there. And the... Right before I quit, when I went in and asked for a raise, I went in and asked, I was $25 an hour underpaid and I asked for a $3 raise and they told me no. And I asked them why and they were honest enough to just look me in the eyeball and tell me, so-and-so doesn't like you and that will always limit your growth here. Okay, so I, I wanted to develop a system at RH where that would never happen. Like, whatever. Let's say you're not Danny Connell's favorite person. Right? Okay, well, that might create problems for you in other aspects of your employment, but it shouldn't ultimately have a huge limit on your ability to get paid what's fair. 
and that's how the system is designed. Now, vice versa, you know, everybody knows Elena's my favorite, right? But the system works the other way too, right? She's not going to get be get be getting paid ten dollars an hour more than is fair because she's my favorite. That's how the system we've set the system up, and I think that's the kind of system everybody wants, right? Um, okay, so before we talk about what, what we're going to talk about several different things this morning, including what what doesn't work good yet, what hasn't been. There's there's parts of this that aren't fleshed out yet. I'll be honest with you, the only person that's really been here long enough to see some of this is Elena, okay, um, full-time. She's the only one that's been here long enough full-time. So Elena is the only one so far that has had like an actual, what, what I call an annual skill review, okay, which we'll talk about in a minute. But <clears throat> we've got 14 people now, and this is getting a lot more important, and Monique has been on my case. You know, our HR gal's been on my case about getting some job descriptions done and getting some stuff done, okay? All right, so what's the, when, when we're, so what we're talking about today specifically is what I call the compensation program and how you get how you get how you make more money um, because that's something everybody wants to do at some point right okay so what's the purpose of the of the compensation system it's to provide every team member with a clear career path and a way to make more money okay and there's a couple key there's a couple key things couple key words in that purpose right every team member should have the opportunity to do this and the path needs to be clear okay that's what we're trying to do. Now, with Brian and Danny and I, we've talked a lot about this, and I'm sure we'll talk some more about it. Um, does that mean that every, that every employee I have wants to be a licensed surveyor? No. Does that mean every employee I have necessarily wants to make more money? I'll give you an example. Monique, she's fairly content. You know, like, I don't know how much of this Monique is going to do, right? She's pretty happy with the job she has. Now, because she really enjoys what she's doing, she's she's thinking about taking some classes and doing some other stuff, but that's not because she wants to make more money. It's just because she would like to get better at her job, right? But, you know, it's possible we have some people like a Monique or Lane that are, you know, they're fairly comfortable. They've got part-time gigs and, you know, they're, they're, they don't necessarily want to take on a bunch more responsibility. And that's okay. All right, so let me just, right here, I forgot to put this on here. So this, this top part right here, this is not optional. This is required. So you get to do that whether you want to or not. Okay, and we'll talk about it. Okay, these two parts, I'm sorry, are required. Okay, but the bottom part's optional. You don't have to, this part down here is optional. You don't have, you don't have to do that if you want. Okay, so like for example, Monique may not do the bottom part. So we designed the, the compensation system with some goals. I think we're doing a good job of these goals, but we may, as we, as we move forward and we get more people going through the system, we may realize that we're not meeting these four goals and then that's why there would be changes, right? Okay, so what are the goals? One is transparent. You shouldn't have to guess. No surprises. I can't tell you how many places I worked at, I, I didn't know how to get a raise or if I was gonna get a raise, how much it was gonna be. I just. It's a guess, right? Like, you, you hope you catch your boss in a good mood. Like, when you ask for a raise, Friday or Mondays? Fridays. Fridays. Okay, around here, it shouldn't matter what day of the week you ask. <laughs> right? It shouldn't change. So, no surprises, no guessing. Okay, so I want it to be transparent. The second thing is I want it to be fair. So, we talked about that, right? No favorites, no black sheep. Okay, I was the black sheep for a long time. So, I don't want anybody here to feel like they're a black sheep. Okay, the, the third thing is I want it to be attainable. Okay, this is like, I think these are, we've set up a system that are, it, it's it's totally doable with a, with a very small effort on the employee's part. It's uh, it's attainable, right? So I'm not telling you, you gotta go get licensed before you get a race. It's not that that isn't attainable, but that's a huge step, right? That's a giant leap, okay? Not everybody's gonna do that, Matt, and I understand that. So we're trying to make it attainable. Okay, the last thing is important for me as a business owner, it's gotta be grounded in reality. Okay, what that means is Austin's not gonna have a private jet. You know, well, he might have a private jet, but it won't be a company private jet. Because is that grounded in reality? Well, it might be a company private jet, it's just gonna be for everybody on team. 
Danny's got big ambitions, yeah. So anyways, well, it's gotta be, it's gotta be practical given the realities of the, of the business, right? Okay, so there's just, I can pay you guys as much as I can pay you while still charging the client a reasonable price and making some profit after I cover costs, right? So there's, there's some practical limitations there. <clears throat> the good news is you do not work for a low bid survey firm. So what does that mean about my ability to pay as a general rule? I, we, we can probably pay a little more. We're gonna pay a little more than a low bid survey firm because we, we should, in theory, have higher profit margins. Um, so we work, you know, we try and work for the top 20, 30% of the market. Okay, and our goal, as the principals, we've talked about this, our goal is to pay somewhere between 10 and 20% above market rate. That's our goal, okay? Now you might ask yourself, why would I do that? Why would we try and pay above market rate, 10 to 20%? There's some very good reasons for that, besides just that we love you. So why would we do that? Does anybody know? All my employees are quiet. Brian, why would we pay 10 to 20% above market rate? Because we don't want to lose you guys. Yeah, so it's a very, there's a very good business reason, and one is that, that really helps pull turnover down. Right? We don't we made a huge investment in most of you guys, and we don't want you leaving. So our goal is to pay 10, 10 to 20% above market rate. Now, there's some challenges with that. Okay, so one is, uh, do I always know what market rate is? No, I, sometimes I don't know what market rate is. I have an idea what market rate is, uh, but that can be a challenge. It can be hard to figure out what market rate is, and we talked about that, right? So like one of the things that Monique has on her to-do list right now is is to go scout around at some, some local job openings because um, you know we're worried that inflation might be a thing this year, and so we're trying to get a handle on what market rate is, okay? Uh, why am I having Monique do that? So that we would be getting paid for him. Yeah, I'm concerned, right? I want to make sure that we're paying slightly above market rate. That's something that we want to do, okay? That's the opposite of, of like even some of the people we do business with, right? Who try to pay 20% below market rate, okay? So, and I've told you guys before too, so this is a great system we have here. I think it's a good system, but let's just say for some reason you get hit up by a recruiter and they send you a, a job opening and you you read the job opening and you think you're four dollars an hour underpaid compared to the job opening that you got okay what do i want you to do with that information that you have you. yeah you bring me the job opening and then, then you're going to give me some time to look at it or brian or danny and we're going to look at it and, and we're going to evaluate now that doesn't mean every time you bring me a job opening, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, you're underpaid. I'm going to give you more money. So let me give you an example of, of how that conversation can go. So <clears throat> let's say Austin brings me a job opening. And it's for a CAD tech with five years of experience in San Jose. And the starting pay is $35 an hour. Okay. Austin, do I pay you $35 an hour? That would be a significant raise for Mr. Hart. Okay. And then Elena brings me a job opening and it's for a landscape architecture company in Modesto and it pays uh, $28 an hour and it's for somebody with, um, you know, uh, let's say an associate's degree in uh, and a, and a two-year degree in drafting or a related program. Okay. Those two conversations are going to go differently. Okay. Because... What I, what I, now, I'm going to try and be fair, but I'm going to look at him and say, okay, does Austin have five years of experience, first of all? No. And is Austin currently driving to San Jose? No. Okay, so Austin and I, got we got to have that conversation, right? Like, all right, what is that trip to San Jose worth every day? And what would I be paying you if you had another three years of experience? Okay, now the conversation with Elena is going to go very different. If Elena has a job... Uh, a, a, a job with two years of experience for a local company and that that pays her two or three dollars an hour more than I'm paying her, okay, then that might merit an adjustment. And okay, now, it might not only marry an adjust, merit an adjustment for Elena, but when Elena brings me that information, what may I realize about everybody at Elena's level? 
Adjustment across the board. Uh, maybe an across the board adjustment is needed. Now, there's some other, there's other information I need. What is that company's medical insurance like? What's their paid time off like? You know, do they allow remote work? You know, Elena works from home two or three days a week, right? So we got to factor all that in. But what I'm saying is, none of what we're going to talk about today means that I don't want to be competitive in the job market. I do want to be competitive in the job market. And here's what I, you guys got to remember. Are people sending me three-year CAD tech job openings on LinkedIn? No. I'm getting hit for the for the LS jobs, right? I don't even see those other job openings. Okay, but the worst thing you could do is come in and tell me you're going to work for another company over two or three dollars an hour. Because you're gonna go work for some guy you don't know who might be a jerk. And if you'd have had that conversation with me, what might what might we very well have done? Give me a raise. Yeah, we might have just remembered. You I'm never gonna get upset that you bring me a job offer or a job opening. Like I'm never, you're, I, it's never gonna be something you gotta feel embarrassed about or nervous about. Is that information I need? Yeah. Absolutely, I need that information. I want you guys to bring it to me. I've got Monique out scouring the internet to try and find that information right now, right? Because it's important. So like, look, a lot of other places you work would, would wanna hide that information from you. Do I have anything to hide from you guys? And we're not, I'm not trying to hide anything. We want to pay 10 to 20% above market rate. Okay, so what that means is, and if we go back to the example I gave you, where Elena brings me a job, local job with her qualifications that pays $28 an hour, okay, that means not only do I probably got to match that, but I got to match that plus 10%, which is another two or three bucks, right? Okay. Now, look, this is going to be interesting. I don't know. The world is changing. You know, it may be in the near future that I'm complete, um, that I am competing now in a national labor, labor market. You know, it may be some company in New York, in Manhattan, will hire Elena for $40 an hour and let her work remote five days a week. All right, well, I just, that could happen. And then when it does, Brian and Danny and I got to figure out how do we handle that? I don't know. You know, the world is going to be different after COVID. The labor market is going to change, right? It's already changing a lot. It's already changing. You know, the flip side of that is I may be able to hire somebody in Kansas now. I may be able to get an LSIT in Kansas, and he's not paying $800,000 a, 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 for a house. So I don't know, guys. I don't know yet how the labor market's going to shake out. That's why we're, we're trying to gather information because we're going to live in a different world now. And at the end of the day, what I want to do is make sure I'm being fair to my employees, but that we can also be competitive, right? I got to be able to do both things. Um, and I think we will. Okay, so transparent, fair, attainable, grounded in reality. Those are the goals. Okay, so let's talk about the parts of the system and how they work together.